Welcome, hello, and welcome back for the <laughs> for the captain's table question and answer session with HC Vertigo and Nazareth. If you missed our episode where we talked about uh, the uh, events, the wipe, the three, the the free flight, and three seventeen point two, make sure you click that link. It will be right above HC Vertigo's head. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're listening to this on the uh, audio podcast, it'll be the previous episode. Uh, and if you're watching this on Twitch, you can check the bot out after afterwards. But uh, this is the section where we take questions from the chat, all these questions from the chat to answer. They'll be to individual chat cast members, to all of us. They're going to be about what we talked about, be about other stuff as well, just as long as they're mostly related to Star Citizen. So with that being said, let's get started with the first question. The first question comes from 2010, who asks, Zeus, when? For those of you who don't know, um, the reason why they're being asked that is because there is a new subscriber suit, which is coming out soon, which is this like old style NASA suit. It's like f retro futuristic Na NASA suit. And it's, it's the best suit. <laughs> it's awesome. It, it's it's being released because it's supposed to be uh, in honor of the Zeus, which is the RSI Zeus, which is one of the first commercially available spaceships and lore for people to purchase. It's like the Model T of spaceships. Mm -hmm. um, so... I'm never, we're never going to see the Zeus. I don't think we're never going to see it. We will see it. I think it. we'll see it in a museum. Yes. CIG may be able to full-size models, slap it into the Museum of Terra or Soul or something, and we, there it is. We'll see it. We'll, it. Nope. And, and we'll see a wrecked <laughs> version on some web, on some moon somewhere, you know? Yeah. But that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that they will, like, one, they need extra resources for it. Mm-hmm. But like the character Chris Roberts we're talking about, he's crazy. He'll do, he can do just about anything he wants. <laughs> He'll do it. I mean, yeah. Just... But w he won't disrupt the schedule that he's made. Like, he's, he's done a lot, he's, he's worked a long time to get the pipeline where it is. And the pipeline is currently working on a lot of important things for gameplay to come in. So, to build a ship, and they will have to use a concept artist or several, and, uh, one or both of the vehicle content teams to get this ship done. So they're probably going to have to actually build the entire ship as it was a ship, as it was a ship in the pipeline. So it's going to take it long as long as a ship of that scale would take, which is, I'm pretty sure it's bigger than the Aurora, right? It's, it's, it's a bigger, like, freelancer constellation sized kind of thing. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's, there's not a lot of space in it, but it's older tech, so there's, like, less in it. Um, so yeah. Yeah, they're going to have to put that time into it. So they're not just going to like, oh, we're just going to build this ship that no one's going to play with. Yeah, because it has to be updated because it would be yeah. woefully out of date. I think I think you might see that in like Star Citizen in 2030 if this game is still around by then. You know, something like that might happen when Star Citizen I mean, I would more developed. I would but. imagine CIZ would do it to make money. They would like, make, yes, it would appeal to like people who are ship collectors. But mm -hmm. honestly, aren't isn't that what everyone is right now, anyways? Yeah, yeah, yeah. ship collectors. Um. All right. Next question comes from Trouble Magnet, and and there's a QPan asks a similar question, so I'll kind of combine the two, which is, what is your favorite part of the current PTU and your top two quality of life changes in three seventeen point two? Vertigo. Um, geez, I like the improved frame rates. Mm -hmm. Um, that's nice. It feels like I said, it's, it feels almost like a placebo effect. Like it's like it's slightly less than ten percent. Like you notice. Yeah. Um, that's the thing I was told. Like in like competitive games, like if you change a number by less than ten percent, you'd hardly notice it. Ten percent is like the bare minimum you need to change something, but it feels like it's barely noticeable. But it's there because. You you always know you you always notice something's better, right? With mm -hmm. Star Citizen, something improves a little bit. You're like, there's something odd here. Is Star Citizen becoming a game now? <laughs> uh, so I like the improved frame rates. I like that CIG's working on getting the netcode fixed up for player positioning and whatnot. Um, the free fly, more free flies never hurt. Um, more new players never hurt. Um, I like the racetrack by Clio. Something I haven't talked about. We visited. it. And it's kind of cool out there. Like they're building places where you can actually run around on a racetrack if you wanted yeah. to. Um, wish they put it on a planet that didn't have such inclement weather though, like Cleo. Hurricane Ooh, force wind. winds are kind of difficult to Everywhere. fly through CIG. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hurricane force winds of the entire mode. Hmm. Um, what else what else you guys got? I can keep going, but this is a That's podcast. Fine. 
Uh, Naz, favorite um, favorite part of the current PTU and the top two quality of life two, top two quality of life changes. Um, that there is a PTU. Like I said, mm-hmm. didn't get to play it other than like ten minutes, like a minute ago. Um, <laughs> um, I think my favorite part that I know about is the illegal cargo boxes and the hangers. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, uh, like I'm glad there is a PTU. Yeah. Because waiting for wait just not dealing with the things that we've dealt with in the three or yeah, three seventeen one branch that they really know need to be fixed. Um and just if they didn't do anything until three eighteen that would have been kind of a bad idea. Um favorite QOL. Uh Top two. reduced floating rocks. Okay. It's one of the things on the patch watch. <laughs> Um, I, honestly, um, the, the racetrack, I, I was actually really shocked about the racetrack because that is XGR and his team scouted that location, made several videos on that location. And then CIG's like community events are already there. Let's just make it happen as a thing for them. So basically they just watch XGR and said, there's a racetrack done. Oh, the, here's the thing that people don't realize. They watch us all the time. Mm-hmm. There are probably CIG employees watching this live and recorded after the fact. It's scary yeah. to know that. <laughs> like <laughs> when you give There's feedback, CIG they employees listen. that watch me, and I ask myself, why would they why? subject themselves to that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just like it, it, it's, it's truly amazing, and I like I, I don't know if either of you saw the uh, the the Twitter post from Jared yesterday about sharing. Yeah, um, like that breaks my heart to hear that that kind of crap happens but it's it's the place that we've been able to cultivate in Star Citizen is that place of we show our stuff as content creators and we get to not only give to the rest of the community but also we get to let the devs know hey your stuff is amazing and then they in turn like well that's amazing guess what this is also amazing and show us even more and I was actually like shocked that there hasn't been any of the other race uh, events have gotten like m- locations made for them like there's no like Stanton Seven start booth. Yeah, how come there's... was Cleo? What was first? Why not Damar? Because Damar it was Rally. a it was a Cause... pop up event on a specific area. It the area they chose fit CIG's way of location scouting. It wasn't a between this outpost and this outpost. It was a single canyon on a moon, yeah. just the same way that uh, CIG scouts for outpost locations. Like they'll just zoom around the out the map. In a spectator camera, like that area looks like it'd be good for an outpost. Yep, Pop looks over. good. Outpost. Yeah. So that's exactly what uh, X Jared and his team did. It's like, oh, we want a canyon run. There are canyons there, and I love the the bar that goes over it because when he did his race without the building there, a lot of people were having a hard time staying under the canyon because they didn't know where the roof was. Now there's a pipe that goes over the entire map uh, to tell you this is the roof of the canyon. Don't go above that. I think yeah. that's really, really, really cool. So I think that is like the best like breakout feature is like a community event. You got a physical location in the game. Yeah. And it's I, racing. I will say my favorite uh, part of the current PTU is the improved frame rates. But uh, some of some people mentioned in the chat as well. The top two quality of life changes in 317.2 were are definitely the alpha. The Mustang Alpha having its freaking cargo oh, box yes, finally. Yes, 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 yes. Oh yeah, I was gonna mention that. And I the and, a picture of it. And the hangers. The hangers are huge, just because mm-hmm. it, it it it. I'm a guy who enjoys a little bit of a role play in 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 the game. Doing that a little bit myself, and I also really really want to force players to not walk around like they're about to assault fucking Fort Knox. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, with an, with a light machine gun and, and armor. And this is one of those things that say, yeah, you can literally just get in a ship from, you know, Microtech and fly to any station and you don't have to take, even put on a spacesuit, yeah. which is, which is now nice. they, now they have start. to work on uh, making NPCs not talk to you if you're in your flight suit, <laughs> just, just because it's like basically running around in underwear because um, now everyone's just running around in no. flight suits. No, you could just run around underwear right now. Like when you respawn after I mean, you I die, mean that you're too, but just don't. Like yeah. the the 
as much as walking around as hey, you a don't know one man army Nazareth, breaks immersion. Like so- okay, the, the 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 future is different. The the culture is different in the future. It's no- perfectly normal to talk to somebody who's naked running around on a space station. <laughs> yes, I don't care if it's normal. I don't like it. <laughs> Maybe they're going to a Bajoran wedding. You don't know. The the next then step. they wouldn't have underwear on, would they? The yeah. next step. They would let us take his underwear off. <laughs> the, the next step would obviously be like like codes that you'd have at different la- landing zones where you like you, d- you don't wear this armor you can wear f- this, this place lets you wear a flight suit but not armor mm-hmm. this place will let you wear armor this place will only let you wear clothes this place will just say because it's it's you know because it's Levski fuck it come in naked we don't care you know yeah. that, that kind of that kind of thing which would be nice to get them stuff like that yeah like mm-hmm. it's, like we get the uh, jurisdictional notes like this is legal this is legal uh, we should also have local localized uh, culture reference References or like yeah. things like, hey, Daymar or not Daymar, but Crusader people are a bit more highbrow. They want you to be a bit nicer to people, uh, something like that. But Microtech is just like, if you're not working, you need to move <laughs> because it, you're either working or doing drugs. Only those two things are allowed on Microtech. <laughs> <laughs> on meth, they're doing meth all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think it's the meth version. It's it's the relaxing drug, and then there's the uh, yeah, workaholic the drug. Yeah, because it's basically a town of college and tech companies and tech startups. So basically, yeah. you're either ha- taking drugs to help you focus through a week long work schedule without sleep, or you're just got done with that and now you need drugs to relax. Yeah, it's like a, a, a trucia toxin and um, etam. I think the two ones. Okay. Uh, might be neon. I don't know. All right. Unknown neon Guardian sounds. asks, um, uh, if you and your guests would have to come up with a new ship, what would it be and its name? And what would it be? What were, what would it be? What's its name? What would it do? I guess just what, if, what would be a new ship if you could come up with one ship? I already have mine, so I'll, I'll let Vertigo go. Um, a uh, anvil capital ship that has guns, like a gunboat or something. <laughs> a gunboat. Okay, yeah, yeah. Something, something. Uh, maybe a little bit bigger than a hammerhead or about hammerhead size. Just got like maybe. Oh, I have one. Uh, a, a, a sniper ship. Some of the hammerhead just got a real gun and maybe a couple point defense turrets. That's it. Yeah. Okay. It's just yeah. it's just the Idris real gun with the engine strapped to it. <laughs> so the Ares. With but, a but, bigger, but, but, just, but just a bigger Ares. Ares. Just basically what the Ares should have been. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I actually have two that I've already like partially designed. Um, the Argo Barge, which is a hull E-ish sized cargo ship, but it's an mm-hmm. internal cargo. Basically, it's a giant ship that is a box, so it yes. has light shielding on it, and it's like a factory floor kind of look to it, and you just pack in the boxes into that thing, um, just Argo styled. Um, and then there's the Cassiopeia, which is the bigger constellation, basically. Okay. That like, can like now a, compete with newer ships because constellation sucks in the current meta. It's like a like a like an extra the large, there. like a like a just subcap version of the uh, of the constellation. Yeah, something like const like little bit bigger or similar size to like the Hercules. Okay. But like multi role RSI look to it. So somewhere between like that would fit between the Corsair and the Polaris. But it's very multi-role focused. Like that very, okay. like the Constellation Andromeda is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, my, my idea is more, uh, always comes back down to uh, the Liberator, but not shit. Um, Liberator, but not shit. Yeah. Um, because the Liberator is a great idea in context, but it needs things like beds where people can go rest. Um, it looks like a Jupiter. Yeah, the, like, the, liberator, like the liberator suffers from a couple. <laughs> the liberator suffers from a bunch of stuff, and honestly, there should be a Jupiter and a half Jupiter. The, what, what well, there will be. be. I'm sure CIG will sell us the Jupiter. I mean, like the 400i was supposedly an obsolete ship, so mm-hmm. I mean, CIG wants to keep making money, so they'll, they'll pull the Jupiter out of their butts at some point. Uh, and I'm I'm convinced, like it is one of those ships that they know when they're going to release it, because eventually they will need it, especially when we have probably the Terra Loop. Yeah, they'll they'll probably need that ship in game because it is that ship that ships ships. It's the yes. the in lore version. I just watched your video about it. Of to literally ship the product of the vessels that they build. Yeah, is what the ship was built for. And they've said that the insurance uh, 
model that we actually have in the game is supposed to actually be the time it takes to ship that ship from the manufacturer to our location. Yeah. How do you ship a ship? Either they figure out how to tie it onto a whole series or the Jupiter. Yeah, you need something that's effectively a for that. But I mean, my concept is always the the Roro ferry, where like Roro ferry. Yeah, roll on, roll off is what's what Roro stands for. Um, where you you drive your 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 car onto the ship, you get out of your car, you, you go up into the little cabin. Roro have, ferry, roll on, roll off. Yeah, roll on, roll off. Yeah, uh, where you where you can you know go to a snack bar, you can get yourself some like a hot dog or some some snacks and. Then you can chill, and then uh, for like much more longer duration uh, ferries, which do exist, and especially in uh, in, the, in Asian countries and Southeast Asian countries, um, they have like beds where you can just sleep, like sleeper cabins. But they're just they're basically ferries that just go longer, and uh, those those ideas will make sense in the world of in the universe of Star Citizen in terms of gameplay because there will be a situation where you don't want to fly your Aurora from. Terra to, to Sol because it would take too long because your your Aurora is too small for its own like it would use too much quantum fuel. You'd have to make like five stops for every system. For every system, so it makes sense to just load that thing onto a ship and then go to bed and then you know or like be able to log out and then come back like an hour later when that ship has already arrived or just chill there and wait and it'll go much faster and you just have to pay a little bit of a fee but you still want to be able to when it gets finished you just hop in your ship and fly away. Because that's what you wanted to do instead of having to unpack it from like a whole series or something like that. Yeah, could you imagine networking on the like talking to all the NPCs, like basically doing the between the mission uh, Squadron 42 gameplay yeah. while you're shipping your ship to a new location that. Well, yeah, but that, that makes that makes sense in terms, in terms of gameplay, but it also makes yeah. sense in terms of like players would also use this for their own purposes. And, uh, you know, it's just not just an NPC thing. And then, of course. You know, a, basically a a a, a non combat version of the of the pers- of the Kraken, not as many guns, mostly for cargo and people. That yep. idea makes sense in terms of just gameplay. That's just what I think. It's that's a misc ship. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next question comes from Unknown Guardian, who asks anything that you want to see changed for the loot and inventory system. Nazareth, start with you. Uh, loot and inventory system. Yes, make everything purchasable, just make it more expensive. Okay. Like, like, I want to be able to buy anything I want when I want it, but I also have the option to just not go loot it. Like, it's it's the difference in the how I play the game. But they took a whole bunch of stuff out of the stores to put in loot tables, including mm-hmm. all the subscriber stuff. They didn't take it out of the ship, but the stores. But I want all the subscriber stuff in public, not subscriber malls, but public shops, because those aren't subscriber items. They are items in Star Citizen that were given to subscribers. Yeah, I think it's better. I like I just want everyone to have be able to purchase with in-game money all of the items. And. We can just loot them for free from looting. That's, what was the second half of the question? It's just which, what do you want to see for loot and inventory system? Um, Furniture. Okay. I want to burn. I want to, like Cosmetics I don't know for your why and hangers. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why, but benches in Star Citizen, like specifically like benches, not the chairs, but the benches they put in these like landing zones. I'm going to collect them. I don't know how, but I want these benches, and they all look so good. I don't know if I've been staring at Art Station for too long, but they <laughs> just look so cool. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh-huh. they just look so good. Um. I mean, I would like to see more stuff in loot tables that's rare or more unusual. I'm sick of finding Ubrev pistols, three Ubrev pistols for every loot box. I fig- I'm sick of seeing those RSS special heavy armors every loot box. I'm sick of seeing arrowheads and Devastator shotguns and R, what is the R97 shotguns and mm-hmm. the S, S38s. Oh, no, S, the S71s. Uh, not at 71s, I don't see them a lot. I see them, those are kind of uncommon, but it's the, the submachine gun, Gemini submachine gun. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I forget. The C54. Yeah. C54. Um, pistols and crap. I'm tired of seeing all this stuff. I'm tired. It's just like, oh, the rare find, the rarest find you usually find is like um, uh, rail guns or missile launchers. 
Yeah. Also, can we have? Man, that's a huge knives? mistake that CIG took those out of the out of the purchasing pool from stores and whatnot. People should be able to go somewhere and buy those. Yes, uh, for stuff like Jump Town. Yeah. I, don't, I shouldn't have to be stockpiling those those things, especially when you got Jump Town going on. Can, can we have um, knives in the loot table? Not yeah, knives. I'm not too fond of. In fact, I think they added too many hacking tools. I'm like, I'm tripping over hacking mm -hmm. tools. They probably yeah. turn turn those back by like 25 percent the drop rate for this thing. But H have you done any looting in uh, like civilian outposts? Yeah. Uh, yes, I have. You find their lunches, and you find all those yeah. uh, <laughs> those berries and revenue yeah. pods and uh, great place to just stock up on water. Like yeah. it's really Base, I, I always joke clothing. about that. I, I I say I'm going if, when my character starts getting low on on food and water. I, I say I'm going to go to an outpost and steal Ooh, someone's lunch. Someone's lunch money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, yeah. yeah, that's what you do. Yeah. But, like, there's so many knives. Like, you're, yeah. if you take all the knives, you would fill your inventory on just knives from, like, two outposts. Oh, yeah. It's insane. Too many knives. Um, I would, I'd love, I love the cave missions where you get to loot the gems. Yeah. From mm -hmm. the, from the people that. you get the game over. Because it, 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 quadruples your earning potential for that mission. Yeah. And it's nice. amazing. I love it. When my inventory doesn't break from doing the mission, so I can usually loot like maybe five or six gems. But if you loot all the gems, it's almost 200,000 extra on top of what you pay, which is like nice. you get 30,000 for doing the mission. Then the, all the gems give you almost 150 K. Nice. It's amazing. It's great. Yeah, um, it takes, that's, it, that's the kind of looting it, I want. Yeah, it takes time, but it's valuable. Oh yeah. You know, it's, it's and like you can go value. mine extra minerals in there too. Like you take yeah. you get the, you loot a mining tool off one of the guys' hips, you go find some had night nose, you mine some extra had night, and then you loot all the gems and you just two hundred thousand. Easy. But you're down there for like thirty minutes. Yeah. Like but it's a fun it takes minutes. time to do all that. Mm -hmm. And someone could mess with your ship, you can get like someone could spawn a new mission on top of you or something. That's why you have a crew. <laughs> yeah, that's why you have crew. Stars it's an MMO, but they should yep. have solo uh, missions that are accessible for solo players. How about inventory? Box missions are accessible for any, solo players. Any changes you'd like to see to the to inventory? Um, transfer all buttons. You know, a lot of quality of life stuff. Okay. Um, transfer all to be able to search for stuff. We need the ability. CIG needs to think about the larger scale implications of inventory and managing inventory, guild level inventory management, mm -hmm. being able to move thousands of missiles you know, thousands of SCUs worth of fuel across the system, moving multiple ships across the star system, be able to move huge amounts of armor from one side of the system to the other. Um, and, to, and to not give players carpet tunnel by moving one item at a time over to the inventory. Yeah, like it, it, it just gives you uh, repetitive strain injury, just trying to move yeah. everything over one at a time. I want stacking. Like this cool this cool auto sort function is is modern and hip and cool, but I don't appreciate it because every time I move something over, my entire inventory screen readjusts itself and then I have to readjust my target. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just, I, stacking would be a huge improvement. Being able to stack all like items on top of each other. That way I can move like a brick of missiles from one ship to another, like 50 missiles from into my C2 yeah, and then move those missiles to like Crusader or something. Um, be able to search for items in my inventory. Uh, knickknacks is almost entirely useless in the current yep. form it's presented in. It needs to be updated to be better so I could search for stuff or find st uh, whatever. But yeah. they're, they're, that I'll leave it at that for now. It just the inventory system needs some improvement, some quality. Needs some improvement. I, 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 <laughs> I'll, I'll agree. Actual feature. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with that, that the, the inventory system, I think my biggest problem with the inventory system is it's just not done yet. But we, yeah. so we have, it's we're fine still... if you have, it's fine if you're a new player and you have a pistol, a ship. Yeah. Um, and a clip for that for that pistol. If if, it, if that's all you have, it's great. But if you're me and you have 150 percent overcapacity at Lorville, like just doing anything with that is just, ugh. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I think my biggest what I'd like to see with looting is I'd like to see looting become more granular. I don't want to see five thousand of the same gun in the same location. I'd like mm -hmm. to see like an end of dungeon chest. If that makes sense. Mm. You go, yeah. instead of having little, little boxes, you have to kind of go find there's, you know, Hey, the bunkers have uh, a, an armory. a armory, you know, give them, give them the guns armory. are. You just put all the guns yeah. there, you know, and, and that sort of thing. And, and there, there's all of the tech stuff you'll find and the random stuff will find in the server room, you mm. know, that kind of thing. So places yeah. where, you know, where you can go find it, but then, 
you, so you don't have to be like, oh, I missed it because I, I didn't see that box. It it's makes in the sense. Shadowed, shadowed. It makes know? sense to have the stupid boxes, the stupid loot boxes in rec sites and in pirate controlled or in like Fort Fob, Fort operating bases. Yeah. It makes sense for that stuff to be kind of like disorganized, but in areas that are like established, mm -hmm. like you'd have a, you'd have an armory with guns in it. They have that actually. Believe it or not, they had that at uh, at Security Post Karaya for the longest time. Yeah. They actually had they actually had an armory in Karaya. You had shotguns on the walls, and they had yeah. like ammo boxes in the corner. Yeah, back That's when back when they had like the little screen, which would show you which airlocks were open, recycled. Yeah, back in like two six something or something. Two six, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. But contextual but, loot. So so that kind of stuff, and I agree with the with the whole concept of like I don't mind looting for for weapons. And making weapons, those like especially heavy weapons, not easy to get, but you still should be able to purchase it. It just should yeah. require some sort of. Um, it should be rep. reputation gated, or yeah. you have to go to Grim Hacks and you have to purchase them from the black market at an outrageous markup. Yeah, and they're illegal. You just make them illegal. Make them all of those yeah. uh, those items illegal to own. Period. Uh, mm -hmm. And and so they're, if you have them and you get caught, you get scanned, you get fined, or you get you get. We we you, we, we already fined. have that in America. We have the uh, the federal uh, the alcohol tobacco the the. What is it? ATF, the Agency for Alcohol, uh, Tobacco, and Firearms. Yeah. Um, there is there's a classification in a, a, for weapons. What's called it? What's called a destructive device. Yeah. It's a firearm that is so destructive that you're not allowed to own it. They just class. They don't even classify it as a firearm. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, and it's basically any weapon that has a bore over half an inch, which is like a 50 caliber, which is like 14.2 millimeters. I want to say for the Europores. Um, mm. 14.5 millimeters. So any weapon that can accept something over that size and diameter, any a projectile over that size, you can start stuffing high explosives into that projectile. You can start stuffing like armor penetration rounds that can go through like the president's limo, armored limo. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're talking like uh, World War II anti-tank rifles. Yeah. Those are what the ATF does not want us to own, you know, or artillery. Like there's certain, yeah. there's certain like if you're a museum, you can own this stuff and still if you have a license be able to fire or, it or you could be a you, government agency. You can own you this stuff because we have... We have Sherman tanks uh, with 75 millimeter cannons that exist in the uh, Washington State Patrol, I believe it is. Yeah. Uh, they use it for avalanche control out in Snoqualmie Pass. They fire higher explosive shells at the mountain yeah. to cause avalanches and they clear I them up. I love avalanche control. It's so fun. It's like, <laughs> we need some way to make this mountain safe. How should we do it? Make it dangerous. Let's make it unsafe. <laughs> yeah. Let's just trigger um, the avalanche early and then just clean it up. Yeah. Yeah. The avalanche is going to happen. We'll just, yeah. we'll just, trigger, it's, it's we'll just so close the roads, trigger the huh. avalanche, and just okay. clean it up. No one's hurt. So, we, just... so we make the avalanche. How should we do it? Let's get a tank. Let's get a like, tank. What do you mean let it get a tank? Let's just shoot the mountain. <laughs> like, hey, it's how cheap. flippin' American is that? Uh, but my point is, is with, with that whole thing, is like, it's like it needs to be available for people to purchase. It shouldn't just, you shouldn't have to like go through a loot table to find it. It just should yeah. be dangerous, difficult, or um tedious i don't mind it being i don't mind it, i don't want it being tedious like you have to go through every loot like you can go to this one location and get a rail gun but that shit's illegal and you're gonna have to wait until that rail gun comes into stock and it may be out of stock for a while and it has a recycle grade of like once every three hours so somebody's gonna have to go back and make or, sure they do it but they have they know they can get it if they wait you know instead of having to go out oh i know a great solution to this like you work uh -oh. your way up with the illegal rep with like Ruto or something, and they yeah. give you a hot tip on a ship that has weapons coming into Stanton for like uh, blackjack security, mm -hmm. and then Ruto sends you over there and it's filled with like rail guns and shit. Yeah, that's such that a good. Get. That's such yeah. a good. You lore guaranteed too. loot. You yeah. go out there, you loot it. It's you're probably gonna get crime stat doing it, but hey, you got you, you could sell that stuff on the black market for good markup, right? Yeah, yeah, that'd be like good for almost every scale of cargo ship too, because that'd be a good like small. Uh, if you like randomly it, give you a small, medium, or large cargo run, and it's a a cutlass constellation or ca yeah. uh, caterpillar, that'd be actually great, almost a great like tiny little like. Um, remember where they they were gonna do those tiny little PVP missions with like uh, Clovis or Neely? Yeah, like you could take the the crash satellite mission, and then people would have the opposite side of that mission mm -hmm. to hunt you down yeah. and stop you. Imagine yeah. as a cargo hauler, you got a mission <sighs> to take a load of rail guns. And you're like your freelancer, so your Avenger good. Titan from Hurston to R Corp because Blackjack needed that stuff. And then someone got a hot tip on your little cargo run. You got a waypoint on your head. Now you got someone coming after you. It's like a reverse bounty mission. 
Yeah. 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 That, ooh, it's so good, though. But, I mean, there's, there's other ways they could do it other than yeah. random dice roll if maybe you find something in a loot box somewhere. It just, it just yes. doesn't work right because people need to have access to those four events, especially for things like Jump Town. Um, mm. I don't mind them being rare. I don't mind them being hard yeah. to get. I just want them to be assuredly get if you have a... I don't, you know, I don't like the dice roll met, no. meta here. RNG no. Jesus having to pray to him. Like, yes, please. I need a, I, Jump Town's happening this weekend. I need at least three rail guns to make it work. Yeah. Please, RNG Jesus. Nobody has the time I have to play this crap long enough to get that kind of, to get that exactly. kind of luck. Especially for events that you need for things like Jump Town. Uh, yeah. Now, and my inventory things can sound a little bit weird. I, my improvement in inventory is make the fucking, like, containers work. If I go into a ship and I have a little like door that opens up, that should be a fucking container CNG. I know that's what they want to do. And in the distant future, that's what they want to do. So my complaint is more, I want more of the actual system in place. <laughs> Spend more, so. give the devs the time they need to actually finish the thing they said they were working on. Yeah, that's just it. Yeah. Um... Speaking right, of the whole mission thing, like mission system, the dynamic mission system is supposed to finish up in September. Yeah. So the dynamic mission system should be something we might actually see in 3.18 or, or, yep. or, or uh, 3.4. At least some like vague ghost of it. Yeah. Because not, the... Not with Quanta. Not with Quanta. No. But no, with, but with, yeah. Pieces of missions dynamically attaching themselves together. Yes. So you can have chained missions and also just random, like, like this mission requires this. You got to take it over here. Instead yeah. of having them to, to physically say, yeah, you have to pick this box up and you take it over here. It's pick this box yeah. up, take it over here. And then when you do that, that you got to talk to the guy behind the counter and he's like, hey, there's a dude out back. You need to kill him. Here's a gun. You know, yeah. uh, <laughs> I, I currently I'm, I'm pretty sure that all missions we have have been specifically authored, right? Yes. Like they say, take this box that will spawn this ID number in the engine and you have to take this to that area we have to type out every single line of text and everything is completely authored right now on every yeah. mission so the dynamic system is basically taking that cutting the entire system up into bits and saying a box could spawn somewhere here's the dynamic text for it it needs to go x so it spawns mm -hmm. at y you need to give it to x so it, it makes everything cheap to implement so they can yeah. implement more they don't have to author every single box mission. They can, say, they can, there are box missions. Yeah, this is a box mission. Plug it in, and it'll just spawn as many box missions as it needs to. Yep. Um, Very cheap. All right. Uh, Trouble Magnet asks, should CIG keep the new PTU model where it stays in PTU for three full months before going to live? Seems like we have um, we will have this for 4.0 patch at least, for 3.18 and 4.0. Um, I Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I, I am. I am a proponent of only three patches per year. I know that sounds terrible, but I'd prefer to have a patch in the spring, in the summer and the fall and then have dot X patches for updates as they need to they need to come by. But I feel like it we will have better patches that way and we will have um, more content in those patches. So they don't have to stretch it because the, the last patch of the year is always garbage. It's always bullshit. It's never like it's the stuff that they fucked up with the 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 previous the previous patch. And it's almost always like, well, technically, it's not really a new patch. It's just the last branch that we're just improving upon, like with like the difference between 317.1 and 317.2. But they just call it 318. It would be would be the example. So, but yeah, I think it's, it makes it for a better overall experience. It helps them CIG sleep better. And, I, and anything that causes those 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 the ladies and gentlemen NBs who work at CIG to not have to like crunch as much i'm all for it vertigo what do you think um the longer the ptu runs the worse experience you have on live mm -hmm. i'd rather have shorter ptus than longer just so the live live experience kind of evens out that's that's kind of like my opinion um i i like i said in the first half of this uh video series to dual to i don't know whatever whatever you want to call this like the two videos mm -hmm. um like they should all, in my opinion, they should always have a PTU and always have a live. There should be almost no bugs in live. Basically, when we go to beta, specifically, when we go to beta, they should have this model because you want everyone who 
buys the game, pays money to buy the game, their first hour, their first day, should be almost flawless. If those people are technically minded, want to help the project more, they can then say, okay, this game's really cool. I'm going to go over to the PTU, get all these new shinies to see, but also be able to help work out the bugs. But that, mm-hmm. that flawless live, because there's a lot of people, and CIG has said, I think the chairman's letter said, there's a lot of people who are just here for a good game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People, like, as we've seen, and I'm sure you two have seen a lot on Spectrum, people do not care about the development of Star Citizen. They want to play oh, yeah. a game. There's people Those who look people... at Star Citizen like it's a product. They don't care about the people yeah. behind it. They don't care about the how hard the work it is. The people, how they, the people, how much work they put into it. They don't care about the people, the personal lives. Right. Um, all they want is a product in front of them to enjoy, to consume. I get and that. that. Is absolutely fine. Like that's that's their thing. They probably have a hobby somewhere else that they get really granular with. But there's also those people in the community that are diehard. I will find this bug and I will tell CIG about every single nook and cranny of this bug. Like, and it would be really good to give each of those players, like they want um, uh, pirate spaces and diehard lawful spaces, they want to give each ever everyone in the community their own separate place to be. And these two live and PTU constants would give those players those places to be. The play- people who do not care about testing things. And on the testing branch, you'd probably find a lot more people if there's a constant live patch uh, less people trying to just kill you because haha fun because mm. there's a lot of people who try and go test but there's no PTU running so they just get killed because it's a live patch and no one cares about testing anymore Yeah. so it would give those people like oh I found a bug let me go test that but there's pirates around and people just don't care about your testing they're just going to kill you anyway yeah I get why CIG says that like it's a live environment the live environment is also a testing environment I get that but we're also those days are coming to a middle uh, I say that a lot and people like laugh and like, ha ha ha. It just, it just means that like, before you know it, we're going to, we're going to reach a point where that's not the case. And the, the, the battle days will be behind us and the, you're going to see, I just going to have to start treating this more seriously than they, not that they don't treat it seriously, but treating it more like a game rather than going, Oh, it's an alpha. It's in test environment. At some point they're going to have to say, no, Live is live is the experience we expect you to have. Yeah, the yeah. They use it as a testing. as a shield. Like yeah. this is an amazing game. We we're on the cutting edge of technology. And it's the best sim ever. Well, you have a bug in it. It's it's an alpha game. It's in testing. This is only yeah. like a live environment. Like we're still in beta. Like they use it as a shield to like they'll say like this is the best game ever. But also like hey, we're in testing when never anyone has a problem. With okay. it. At like, some point, they kind of they got to stop that. And yeah. I get what, like, they're not there yet, but they're getting close enough to there where it's just like the, that excuse is wearing thin. Especially when yes. things like... Especially when PTS or P- PES, whatever. PES, yeah, PES yeah. and, and um, uh, uh, static server meshing. You know, SSM. Yeah. I, server meshing, I don't think, is going to make that many people's game change. Just because it is, it's the thing that makes the world available, mm-hmm. and it will make more space for the world and interaction. But after the the back end item system is done, if they were just to polish that, the change would not be dramatically different between playing persistent streaming and playing 4.0. Except for you know, a no, new system. <laughs> I think the, the gameplay minute to minute will yeah. be very much the same. All right. Uh, next question comes from Outlaw Knight Zero, who asks, "What's your current? F- uh, what's your favorite current bug and favorite bug of all time?" Vertigo. Can I start? <laughs> yeah. Current and then all time. Uh, okay. Current bug. Oh man, I'm trying to think of what bugs like uh, are going on right now that are fun. Uh, oh, the no gravity in R Corp. Yeah, literally had this today. I was um, uh, the, the the divided empire. I call it divided empire because it looks like a little vision sign in front of the word empire. Yeah. Uh, but the medical center at Area 18, no gravity inside any any parts of the medical center. Only the elevators inside, and the the very entryway to it has gravity. So you go inside, you're immediately in EVA. And I decided to travel around the various floors to see if any of the floors had gravity. No. But they had NPCs in there. And I had fun flipping the NPCs around like coins. 
<laughs> I'd, I'd run into them and they just start because they're they're stand they're standing stock stiff like yeah. they're on ground and they're just they're just in standing animation. So you can imagine someone who looks like they're paralyzed, like by ten thousand volts, they can't move, and they're just tumbling through space. And it's just it is just the most hilarious thing. And then they pass through walls and yeah. then they pop back into the room. And <laughs> it's great. Uh, so that's my favorite favorite bug currently in the PTU. All time. My favorite bug of all time has to be when we sold when we stole um was it Reco Bataglia from yeah. not just Reco Bataglia. We we managed to pass a six hundred I through the walls of Levski to steal everything that wasn't locked down. Mm -hmm. It had something to do with like getting a part of the ship to pass through the wall, but once you get one part of the ship past the wall, the entire ship goes. And then everything you pass through, everything that's literally not nailed down comes with the ship. We had like fan blades, like animated fan blades we stole from the vent system that was just there for like Paul, I'm gonna say it, just there for the atmosphere. <laughs> ah <laughs> <laughs> just there for the obvious the atmosphere of Levski. So we stole, like, NPCs were coming with us. Van Blades were coming with us. We stole Reco Bataglia. She'd still give us missions. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. We'd be in the middle of nowhere, and she'd be like, what are you doing here? I, I'm like, you, you, strange place to meet you, Reco Bataglia. Um, oh, my God, that's we, we, we used that to run people over at, at, at uh, we, we were being assholes with this bug, too. We, we would oh, run man. people over at, like, Olisar, too. We'd pass through the walls of Olisar and, at full speed and just... Just crush three people, three or four people, get immediate crime stat, immediate oh rank five God. crime stat. That's so good. It was, it was. <laughs> I think uh, I may have, I may have a video on my YouTube channel of us doing that. That bug is like dead forever. Up. My God, uh, we also used great. the uh, armistice zone to put uh, a, we, we did a turducken with the, um, the reclaimer. We, there was this one thing with the armistice zone at all star back in like the 3.5, 3.4 days of star citizen. Where if you were half, if you were fifty one percent of the way inside the Armistice Zone towards Olasar, the part of your ship, the fifty, the forty nine percent of their ship that was outside the Armistice Zone was intangible. Oh, it, you could you could fly through it. So big ships like the Reclaimer, you could you could have the ass end of the Reclaimer hanging outside the Armistice Zone. Fly another ship into the cargo bay of the Reclaimer, and then move the entire ship out of the armistice zone and then the ship the ship would physically materialize around the ship that you had inside of it so all you had to do is go from 51 percent to 49 percent, and the reclaimer would suddenly become solid for that ship so we managed to make a turducken we had a uh we had a dragonfly inside of an avenger titan inside of a reclaimer i don't know how to get more ships inside of other ships but we, we managed to do it <laughs> <laughs> naz favorite uh favorite current bug and favorite it can be in like live as well um and favorite bug of all time mm. I don't know if I have favorite bug currently. Uh, I try to stay pretty far away. But my favorite bug would be any bug that helps you actually play the game. <laughs> um, work, work around bugs, my favorite yeah, bugs. Yeah, yeah. Current, I think that would be my current. I don't know of any like off the top of my head. Most of the bugs I start hunting because I'm really bad at technical bugs is art bugs. So I just like walk around somewhere. That art's in the wrong spot. Five photos later and post it on the or issue cancel. There's like there's actually like a, a air conditioner in Babbage that's just like shoved into the geometry, and there's all sorts of gaps in the geometry. So it's like, eh, CNG, fix this, please. <laughs> how about the uh, how about all time? All time is the being able to, uh, what was it called? The, the the get in get on your stomach down at what the, what's the what's the stupid term? Prone, get prone, and wiggle yourself through barriers. So you can get out of bounds really easily. Well, you used to be able to. I think this was like three six possibly earlier. Mm -hmm. Very early social module stuff. Um, oh yeah, and you could get out of uh, get out of uh, area eighteen. Yeah, I've yeah, yeah. I've been trying that for ever since because there's like little parts of places you just want to get just a little bit farther into the map, um, but you can't like come in because it's a landing zone. But you want to get like just beyond a barrier and you can't do it. But in when we had that bug, we could just like, oh, there's a fence here. Just prone, wiggle around, you pop through. And you could just, well, there was almost like twice the amount of map in the map. Yeah. So it was really cool. I think that is like my all-time favorite because I keep trying to do it. Uh, like, my, especially my... in a Star Marine, I keep trying to do it because it's like there's a whole planet outside the map. Uh, my favorite current one is Pretzel Man, where you're like, you, your, your character starts to like, 
rotate in on yourself and it's like a, a, oh, like yes. a guy, oh I had that recently a, ge a Geiger like where you just continue to like like to roll yourself up your torso just rolls up into yeah. <laughs> a tiny little singularity Ugh. um and uh my favorite of all time is a bug that was very very fleeting but it was a bug where you could step on a single step in Grim Hex so when you went down the, the elevators in Grim Hex there were the, the steps that lead up into the rest. Like you had to go into the rest. There was a step that if you stepped on that step, it would kill everyone in the server. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. It was Why? in a PTU patch that they eventually patched. It was patched. in a PTU patch. Yeah. yeah. Why? I don't know how that it never happened. Made it to life. <laughs> uh, I would have used the hell out of that if it made it yeah. live. Oh I was able God. to crash the servers once just by messing with an arrowhead. I picked off someone's corpse. That lasted, I asked, see, CIG actually, that was the first time I ever had my account reset, by the way. First time I think anyone's had their account reset by CIG. I Ooh. actually asked for it when they showed up on my stream chat. I'm like, yeah, this is too much power for one man. You need to take it for me. <laughs> I, 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 I thought, of, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it's technically a bug because it's technically a feature, uh, but being able to uh, squish NPCs in the hangars and steal their armor. Oh, yeah. Who was that? Because I, I have a Microtech armor set because of it. I, I, will, that back in too. I will also yeah. say say I think all of our our, our honorable mentions would be the the uh, Ant Man bug, where you could turn yourself. Oh, the shrinky bug. The shrinky bug. I'm, I'm, I'm could, not seeing that one. So you, you there was a bug where like one of the seats on one of the stations you could sit down and your character yeah. would go a little bit, just a tiny bit. Ooh. But every time so it's you like sat five down, five millimeters. Yeah, every five time. millimeters. But every time you sat down, you get shorter and shorter and shorter, and so. Like I noticed it because I was like, why is everyone so much taller than me when I was sitting after sitting down? Like that's weird. We're all supposed to be the same height. And people began to abuse it so to a point where a character would be literally that big. Like they could we stand got, on the seat. How long would that take somebody to get themselves down? We did to a little it. Bitty it took one. us about a half hour. Yeah. We got oh, okay. we got one of our we got one of my viewers down to the size of the ice cream cone <laughs> in Star Citizen. Literally she oh, was the man. exact same size as one of the ice cream cones. And you could use everything just as normally, and you are the same exact size every yeah, time you're using you something. You you're fly, you're flying in six hundred i. You are the you are sitting down in the sitting animation, trying to use trying oh to use the, the joysticks through tele telepathy, yeah. and your uh, you, viewpoint you is got... the exact same height as your character model, so oh you can't God. see shit. Yeah. Oh my! You should have got one of those empty Kovlex boxes and just have them jump in it. And carry it around. The person. <laughs> yeah, and, oh, yeah, you can still use weapons too. You can still pick up guns and oh stuff and fire the guns, and you're just as deadly. You're just best, really small. <laughs> best bunker uh, uh, strategy: make yourself this big so no one can hit you. And, and is it the real shame is that CIG was really quick to patch that out. It was like yeah. it was the funnest thing ever for for a little for for, for a little while. <laughs> uh, that was a PTU bug, bug as well. That was that was not a live bug. It was a PTU bug. Uh, all right, That's we got last crazy. last two questions. Um, the, this question comes from Del Ener, who asks, there's been a lot of frustration with the event schedule this weekend with complaints about times not being ideal for EU. Is it time for CIG to split servers into EU, US, AU, like they initially planned for the server meshing clusters? It would make it a lot easier for CIG to schedule each region. They already do. Yeah. But they should just add more times. That's all. Like, also, this is a stopgap. Yeah. The the dynamic missions will be dynamic. They will stop announcing dynamic missions eventually. Oh, they will Once still announce get... them. But they just won't announce them on like they won't be like, hey. Um, yeah, they're not going to tweet. Yeah, they're not going to tweet at you. You're not going to you're not going to know when this week in Star Citizen that jump down is going to happen. It's just going to happen. Yeah, there it will be an in game broadcast. Like, hey, the station's under attack by the Nine Tails. Yeah. Hi, Zeno Threat has been spotted in this area, and once we have three or four different systems, each system will have a set of dynamic events that can happen in it. Yeah. So we will have several dynamic events happening per week. Most likely. So it, it's going to get messy. It's yeah. going to get messy. Real messy. Um, yeah, I just, I, 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 they just need to increase the times. Just, I, 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 like the thing is, is that they can now dynamically create them. It's not like dynamically spawning, but they can just say, "Hey, start it at this time, this time, this time, and this time." And they've got a tool that yep. will like let it run. So they just, just they, they don't need to have somebody who's up pushing the button to make it start. Just let yep. the tool run. Uh -huh. Just, just bad on CIG for timing is all it is. So, uh, all right. I mean, that's probably it's probably marketing saying, "Hey, these are our peak hours." That's probably it. Yeah. 
It's, it's probably a combination of player experience team and marketing and other people just saying, hey, these are the people when most people are playing. Let's just hit those times. All right, last get, question. Get more people to play in the EU. Is, uh, is from QPAN. It's a nice little, little, little procedural question. How is everyone today? Have you heard any good jokes lately? No, I haven't heard any good jokes lately because the only people who tell me jokes are people like Vertigo who tell me dad jokes, which are bad jokes. <laughs> But I'm doing okay. Uh, I'm tired, here. but I'm okay. Uh, how about you, Vertigo? Uh, let's see here. Um, my my father passed away recently from an overdose of Viagra, and my mom took it really hard. There's a good one. I heard that mm. made, made my day after I heard that joke. <laughs> 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 and that's a dad joke, by the way. You want to see Paul, 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 Paul can see the future. He knows a dad joke's coming where the yeah. ones that are not. Yeah. <laughs> how, how, how are you doing today, though? Vertigo. I'm I'm feeling better. I'm feeling better. Like there's been a bunch of new stuff going on. I'm not going to go into the details. Yeah. with it's been making me feel kind of down. Uh, but we're trying to we're trying to get over it. Yeah. Uh, great game to feel angry about. Yes. Getting over it. <laughs> it's great. To, yeah. Nas. First off, um, how are you doing? And then any heard any good jokes lately? So I've actually like today is one of the best days all week because one I get to be here. Mm -hmm. Two I've been sick with the sick, um, the global sick this the, week. The big sick, yeah. the big sick, the big, big sick. sick. Yeah, uh, I think I had that last month. I had some arthritis because of it, but I'm oof. I'm feeling so much better now. No, I I got the one day I felt like I get hit by a truck with a truck inside mm -hmm. on top of another truck. But after that, I've just had headaches and sinus problems the rest of the week. But today. All I have is some like lingering phlegm and mm -hmm. no headache, no giant phlegm, like no science pressure. Pretty good. So hopefully next two days will be cleared up for sure. Uh, so this is like yet yeah, last night and today. It's kind of like my like getting back into content creation, um, which is super cool. I get to be here, which is weird because I like somehow even with being sick, I wasn't supposed to like they didn't change my schedule at all. They just like. I guess glossed over my schedule at work and I just was not scheduled for today. So sweet. Super cool. Um, any good jokes? No, I am not somebody who's good at finding or remembering jokes. I'm good at being joked at. Mm -hmm. La good sure. at laughing. Not so much as the, at the, 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 the only the jokes giving. I can like make are very, very British, very dry, and very whatever the moment is. Yeah. Like, I have to make a joke in the moment, or I can't, like, I can't come up with standalone jokes. So mm -hmm. that's why I'd be a terrible stand-up comedian, even though I'm standing every time I do this uh, podcast. With that, well, that's the last question for today. Thank you all for coming in today. Um, we've been hitting almost directly exactly at an hour, so it's perfect. Uh, it. we're, we're, Paul, we're you have become efficient after all these years of doing podcasts. I've, for all I've, years. It only took me six years to figure out how to get this done. <laughs> <laughs> how, to, how to get it done properly. But you know what? I, I'll say this. This is my joke. I'm, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm learning how to do podcasts faster than CIG is learning to do Star Citizen. That's that's that's. Mm. <laughs> I love you, CIG, <laughs> but it's been ten years. Uh, <laughs> I mean. Uh, they, they, I hope they know, like, internally, like, we're like, yeah, it's been 10 years. We're, we're, like, they're doing a good job. Like, but I hope they can, like, look at themselves like, hey, we've been working on this game no, for, for 10, 10 years. years. We deserve some crap for this. Yeah. Sometimes you take a little, eat a little bit of crow every so often. A little yeah. humble pie. Um, uh, with, but with that being said, thank you all so much for joining us for this question and answer session. Make sure that you're following HC Vertigo and Naz on their social medias on Twitch and YouTube. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube itself, make sure that you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so, because you may not actually be subscribed because this is on a brand new channel. The Astro Pub is moved cool. to split between our my lore channel and my gaming content, and this is the gaming content channel now. So make sure you are subscribed to that so you can get up to dates when these come out. And uh, if you're listening to this on the podcast, make sure that you're you know, following us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all those sorts of things so you can get to know when exactly when these come out. I'll give you all a little hint. They come out in podcast form faster than they come out on YouTube because Spotify doesn't hit me with their with their algorithm as much. So make sure that you are, if you, if you really want to listen to it, you want to use a little bit of late latency, only a little bit of bandwidth, you can always get us hit us up on Spotify there as well. And help us support this as there as well. 
And you like do, you don't do like visuals. What's that? You don't do visuals. It's easier for you to put it up on audio. Yeah, and it's it's yeah. a lot of, a lot cheaper for if you're like listen to this going to work or you listen to this at work. You don't use as much. So nice. All right. Thank you all so much for for hanging out with us here tonight. And like I say every time, hope to see you someday in the black.